This video is for Dennis. Um, I'm going to discuss the substitute chords that I use in the song Affirmation. Here we go. E minor 9 is the first chord I would use. You need a working knowledge of jazz chords because I'm going to go pretty quickly through this. E minor 9 and then that resolves to a B minor 9, B minor 11. The notes are E, B, G, A, D and F sharp resolving to B, D, A, C sharp, E. I would also learn it up here, E minor 9, E, G, D, F sharp, low E as well if you want, resolving to B minor 7, B, F sharp, A, D, F sharp, B. The melody comes diatonically from B minor scale. Now that whole phrase is four bars long and it sits on top of this set of chords. One, two, three, four, E minor nine, two, three, four, bar three, two, three, four, bar four, two, three. melody in two places here around these chords and here around these chords now we've got two different chord shapes for our E minor 9 and our B minor 7 or B minor 9 then we've got the melody around our two different areas of activity. That gives us some flexibility with sound as you can hear they're the same chord progression but they sound quite different. The substitute chords that I use move towards those existing chords on that four bar framework right so we've got one two three four two two three four three two three four four two three four four bars two bars of E minor two bars of B minor the first chord substitute that I would do is to create a chord that has motion and momentum into our resolution chord which I feel is B minor that's where I feel it's coming back home I feel like the E minor is a very light tension kind of summary sort of vibe chord that moves back towards B minor we're going to substitute in an extra chord just before, probably beats three and four of bar two, just before we head back to B minor. This chord is C13, has the notes C, B flat, E, and A. And I would also play that here, but more like a C9 add 13 or C13 no fifth, no mat five, which is again the same, similar notes, just an extra, one extra note. C, E, B flat, and then we've got a nine, a D, and a G. Both chords sound great moving back to their respective B minor sh shapes. B minor 7 and here to our B minor 11. Lovely. So now we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3. In our higher position, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, Two chord sub, C13, one, two, three. So that sound creates motion away from our key center and then we resolve back into our key center. The chord substitute I would first use is a semitone above B minor. The next substitute I would use is a semitone above our other chord that's in the original progression, which is E minor. Semitone above that is F. The chord would be the same chord type seems to come out of nowhere until you hear it in the progression we're going to move from an F13 F E flat A and D to an E minor 9 now you can kind of hear it. close motion of the root sounds really nice just like this one did and I would move it at the end of the fourth measure so it sounds like this one two three Four, one, two, substitute chord, three, four, C13, and then three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Just at the end there. I play it up here. There's 
our chord there, F9, F, A, E flat, and on the top, G. So now we have two substitute chords and two original existing chords. Then in the video, what I do is I go into even deeper territory with those substitutes. So one example of that, starting on E minor 9 down here, and I'll just play the scale, B minor scale, starting from E. Maybe put a little chromatic step like I did there in between F sharp and A. Then, instead of just going to the C13, which is that lovely sub we did, I might put one further substitute before the C13, which would be a C sharp minor 9. And then F13 to come back to E minor 9. Now we have this sound. Play the scale. Then our substitute C sharp minor 9. To our C9 or C13. And then B minor 9. So you'll notice that I'm playing scales around each chord. These substitute chords need their own scales. To be honest, I'd mostly play arpeggios because you don't have a lot of time to just rip out scales. C13. Those two dominant chords, um, those two different voicings of the C13, the scale that I use for those chords is the Lydian dominant, a C major scale with a raised fourth and a flat seven. C, D, E, raised fourth would be F sharp, G, A, flat and seventh would be B flat, B flat, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B flat, C. Sounds great on that chord and then resolving into B minor and B minor scale. Here's our C13 again. C Lydian dominant scale. Notice that I am using some chromatic passing tones. Same thing with the F13 chord that I was talking about earlier. That resolves to the E minor. Well, I've got to learn my F Lydian dominant. So that scale is F, G, A, B, C, D, E flat. Then I could do other things I remember in the video. I do like this weird F over G which kind of precedes the C9 and then goes towards the E minor. So that sounds something like this. I do like to put diatonic passing chords in as well. E minor 9, D major. 7, or in this case D major 9. Alright, A on the bottom, just using my second finger. A, D, F sharp, C sharp, E. C sharp minor 9, G sharp, C sharp, E, B, um, D sharp, C9. That's a nice progression. B minor I might play here or here 
or here. Something like that, that's a nice little lick there. That one there. B, F sharp, A, and E. And then the E at the top moves down to a D. I just, you know, bar it with my uh, second finger. And then B minor 9, which is A, D, F sharp, C sharp, and then yeah, that sounds nice. It's kind of a nice line. Play that in E now. But on the dominant chords, I'm doing a lot of substitutes or sequences of chords. Basically those three chords. And those notes are C, E flat, um, A, and D. Then we've got this chord here, which I think of as like an it's like an F F9. So that's G, C, uh, E flat and A. And then this chord here, which I think of as like an F13, which is E flat, A, D, and G. And I think that's really valuable is to learn a whole bunch of different chords that move within or around your existing shape. Just like we did with the minor chords, we've got to do the same thing with the dominant chords. So yeah, there's obviously there's a bunch of exercises that I've done just to sort of transform all of the notes through the Lydian dominant scale I just played then. Our concept is we're digging into our existing chords by using substitute chords, and those substitute chords come from a very specific place, a semitone above the root of each target. Then we can get fancier by adding even more passing chords. Mm -hmm.